Welcome to the RGVSports.com Week 10 uh, webcast, chat, whatever you want to call this thing. I'm Brian Sandlow and I'm joined by the 35A guru, Todd Orodanker, and the 32-4A expert, Dennis Silva. And we're just going to jump right into it, uh, get this over with pretty quickly. I know I'm sick of this story. Dennis, you're probably sick of it too. What's the latest on uh, Ed Couch Elsa? Well, Wednesday morning, they, um, the UIL cleared them of any allegations, the latest being that they used an ineligible player in two games earlier this month. UIL basically said it was uh, they, the, the Ed Couch also last night, overnight, or on Tuesday night, overnighted a packet pretty much in defense that, hey, this was just a mistake. It's, it's a failure, a uh, communication failure that they termed it. And um, basically, the teacher essentially didn't get the right process in, in in time and that co that cost them that made things look look a little bit more more shady than it needs to be but the bottom line is he was passing uh they got the grades in eventually um and they got it all fixed out in the uil saw their defense saw the paperwork saw the documentation said okay uh y'all are good to go and uh no no big concern here head couch also having procedural issues no kidding yeah what, I know. A, what a stunner yeah first but, time uh, ever but now uh tuesday night i actually think there might have been some bigger head couch news uh with the school board that turned over six out of seven um what does this mean for uh joe solis well uh basically just with the rumblings on what you hear is pretty much that had the old board remained i don't know if it would have stayed but it would have been a longer process that they would try to see avenues he could have stayed with the new board what i'm hearing is, is pretty much not good news at all for Solis or the entire coaching staff for that matter. They're pushing change. They're pushing... It's one of their slogans. Yeah, yeah. it is a slogan. And um, they're pushing any avenue to kind of clean up this government, clean up this madness that's been going on. And it was a bit of a surprise to see six of the seven seats uh, change. And I think that's a huge... Did Nate Silver have uh, those seats changed? Uh, I think he did. I think yeah. he did. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's one of those things where it's, the people are fed up with this. Uh, they're tired of it. Whether, I mean, if, it's not just football and these Well, they have bigger, bigger things. fish to yeah, fry, I think, than just the football. Yeah, team. I mean, we're talking well, about stage five with the high yeah, school. I don't know about that. that. But that is a pretty big visible so change to make. The question is... Is this job going to be a marquee job in the Valley? Jason Garrett's going to be. Just Jason, well, he actually might be. Well, considering Jerry Jones, but we're not talking about the Cowboys here. No. Is this going to be a marquee job in the Valley? Do people want to go coach no, at Ed Couch? It's, it's gonna How be much a, do they pay? It's going to be, a, it's gonna be a young, uh, hungry assistant, I would think. That's my money. Are they going to take somebody that. from the current staff, or are they going to go outside? They'll have to be outside. Well, I mean, remember Los Fresnos, San Benito, Harlan, Sherrilyn, Mission. Some of these one school towns that we have. Crazy as a young, hungry, and, and risky, uh, risk taking assistant. It wasn't, it wasn't that case in, in San Benito, it wasn't that case this in Los Fresnos. Different. There's more and those baggage. are crazy one school There's towns. There's more baggage here. There's a this. lot of baggage. Yes. I'll give you, I'll give I'll go the opposite way a bit. I think um they will clean house. I don't think it's gonna be anyone who, who's gonna who's gonna stay there. I do think someone's gonna want in and it's gonna be a, one of those jobs where you can come in and you kind of sort of be the savior if you turn this thing that's around. Yeah. And that's something a lot of coaches, there's big egos out there and they may say, hey, this is a challenge that I'm going to be seen as like a god in this city. If I can come in, we can win cleanly, win quickly, and yeah. completely erase all of this Well, you're more stuff. optimistic yeah. than I am. And the thing is, you can win there. You don't have to build up anything. No. Exactly. They Kids when they, yeah, play I mean, football on Ed Couch. You don't, numbers is not an issue or anything like that. And you're in 4A. Right. Yeah, that's so true. actually 4A is going to get a little bit more difficult in two years with Don and Sherilyn probably. I would think so. Getting yeah. into that mix. Yeah. Now, uh, speaking of Sherry Land and Donna, we're going on to the uh, top ten. Uh, this week's top ten has Sherry Land and Donna on top. Westco East three, Mission High four, Westco High fifth, uh, Brownsville Veterans sixth, Harlingen High seventh, Harlingen South and Ed Couch tie for eighth, and at ten Los Fresnos. And as you can tell, I'm not terribly thrilled with the top ten because there are four thirty-two five. How does that make you feel? Does that make you feel bad? It makes me feel kind of icky inside now like, which team should be on that list that i don't know not. which teams i mean i don't well, then know you, then how do you feel icky about it you gotta have are, a because you can't put four teams in the worst 5a district in the top 10 they've been beating up on teams that aren't good it's like putting big east teams in the top 25 it's true i just can't i don't know i feel like that was it, a it, I'm sorry. it's a week <laughs> it's it's not the best year ever valley football but no. i mean you can make ar arguments for the mccallum memorial probably mccallum row Mm. I would think it's tough. I mean, I put Edinburgh North. Yeah, but 
four thirty two five eight teams. I don't I know. I agree. I thought it was a little much, but uh specifically having Brownsville bets up at six, then you know, how do you kind of gauge between vets and Harlingen and Harlingen South at those Fresnos? You know, I think it's one of these things that if you just look from six on down, it's kind of like whatever. Wait, I mean, so so many teams in the bottom of the top ten lost uh, last week. Yeah, and then you kind of got you could, the top ten part of it is you kind of go with 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 who's hot and who's been playing well. And Edinburgh North losing last week and Macau Memorial they Wait, lost to Edinburgh two North lose to they again? did lose to Sherryland. And that, where are they ranked? Number the fifteen. Number one, <laughs> one right? Yeah, and they've they're undefeated, right? I suppose. So it's not really like a terrible loss. It right? is not. No. I don't know. I, Dennis, uh, what were your reaction when you saw this top ten? Why are you all gloomy? I am very <laughs> gloomy. This is depressing for you. Anyways, Dennis. Yeah, um, yeah. Basically, I mean, this is pretty – I mean, we can talk about who goes in, but this is just what? the – this is the season we're dealt with this week. I mean, we have teams that are middle of the package. I mean, you have you, you have your Sherilyn, your Donna, your West Coast East. From there on down, the rest of the way, it, it can be – Anything that's pretty representative in this top ten, I think. It's just kind of a, a, a mess, actually, in the bottom ten. I guess now moving on from the top ten, which is really objective, which is more subjective to the playoff scenarios, which are quite objective. They're cut and dry, so just we'll run them down. Uh, Todd, 35A, looks, looks like that one's kind of simple. What's going on? Simple is a good word to use it. Uh, Sherryland's in... Donna's in, Edinburgh North's in, in the last spot. Wars Lincoln and Economides and Economides will be in La Jolla to play Palmview, and Wars Lincoln will be in Donna to play uh, the Redskins. If Wars Lincoln wins, they're in. If Economides loses, Wars Lincoln is in. And if Economides wins and Wars Lincoln loses, Economides is in. Okay. So Economides needs a win, and the other team to lose, and Wars Lincoln needs a win, or the other but team Economies to lose. Economides seems like they have the leg up. Um, the Wars Lincoln's going to be a very tough game for them to, to, to win. They always kind of get on me. Nobody picks us. You guys never pick us. You know, that kind of thing. That's, they're, that's tired and old. I'm they're playing bad. Donna. It's going to be a very tough game for them. I know Donna. this is the last Donna game before the Donna North opens next year, so this is the last planned home game before... They become a two-school town, so they're going to have a whole big dog and pony show for this game. Yeah, I would think so. Now, yeah, and they're going to want to win, yeah. so it's going to be tough for uh, for for Rogers Lincoln. Right, they're playing the La Jolla school. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, Economides kind of should be able to go in and beat Palmview. Okay. I like the way they've been playing, even though they lost the last couple games. So I like Economides kind of to get into that spot, spot, but I can't be wrong. You can't. You have been in the past. Yes. <laughs> now, thirty-one five A Wesco East. Uh, they're in. Code. Uh, they've got at least a share of the district title. Mm-hmm. Wesco High is in. McAllen, I'm trying to figure out. So McAllen High and McAllen Memorial have the uh, winning in. They're winning in. Um, McAllen Row needs to beat Westlake East and have McAllen Memorial or McAllen High lose. Right. And Pretty then PSJ North and, and then San apparently Benito. PSJ North and San Benito can still get into it. Sky. It's good. Everything has to shake out perfectly it's for them. Crazy. It, it's crazy. It's a little bit uh, out there, but pretty much pretty simple math for for Mac or for the three McAllen schools actually. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty simple. Thirty-two five A. That's all done. Settled. I mean we. Looking for a district champion, I guess. Pace, Pace will not be winning the district <laughs> title. Uh, they will not be qualifying for the playoffs. Uh, but you don't know that yet. We, we do. Wait for certification. That's true. A lot of weird <laughs> things can happen. Is Ed Couch in that district? Uh, no. But Har- okay, so we got what? Harlingen, Harlingen South, and, and Los Fresnos are tied at what? Six and one? They all have one loss, yeah. They all have one loss. Uh, and there's a Harlingen South is playing Los Fresnos, so yes. one of those teams will fall from the district title. Yes. Harlingen beats Hannah. They, they have win a, a share of the district title. Yeah. I'm sure this is exactly how Manny Gomez drew it up, <laughs> having to beat Hannah for a share of the <laughs> district title. Hey, they were very close to be having to beat Hannah to get in. Wouldn't that have been fun? And this game will be on Comcast Sports Night uh, Houston, right? right? Yeah. Isn't this supposed to be on CSN Houston? I think yeah, it's which nobody s- will ever see ever. I think it's streamed on Comcast something. Whatever. It's going to be streamed. Well, we'll get it out there if, if it's streamed and you yeah. can watch this yeah. with a with a professional production. I'm sure it'll be just great. Yeah. Now, 32 4 eight, that's all settled. The four teams are done and dusted now. Uh, but district title uh, is going to be determined tonight, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Mission's uh, going to host Mercedes, and if Mission wins that, they get it out right. If Mercedes happens to win, then they get a share, but that also opens the door for... Who, you know who uh, Ed Couch Elsa to sneak in there and Wouldn't make it. Wouldn't that be ironic? That, that would be, be something. something if Ed Couch Elsa ends up with a share of a district, of a district title. It's got to win Friday if, if Mercedes wins, but that, they're playing against Rio Grande City, which hasn't won a district game all season, so they're, they're you know, probably going to win. In normal circumstances, you say, man, the coach got them through all this adversity, deserves coach of the year. 
I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, Egg Couch is. I mean, some of the games that they've put up have, have just has just just been. Uh, I mean, the players you can see just take this game so personally that it's a credit to them that through all this adversity, through all this madness, they're right in there and can be in the talks for a district title right now. That's commendable on their part. Yeah, now, good for the kids. Yeah, good for the kids. Good for them. They put in a situation that they don't really deserve. Not at all. No, and I guess we forgot to talk about this during our top ten. I wanted to, but just very little thought about the Bird Bowl. Anybody have any uh, no. retroactive thoughts about it? No, I think it's over. Let's move on. Wow, <laughs> Todd, but you don't want to talk about the big Harlingen Bowl? I'm not from Harlingen. Um, our, uh, our our disembodied voice over here is uh, is telling us to move on. Wow, I, I guess we have a director now. We, we have a director. All right, Steven then. Spielberg Jr. Steven Spielberg the <laughs> third. How's uh, Lincoln going to be? Is Lincoln going to be good? I think you know, it's actually yeah, it's probably going to be pretty good. I'm really looking forward to that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, moving on to the games to watch now. Uh, Boy, this has really gone great here tonight. Uh, games to watch. Todd, we'll start with you in 35A. What's going on? Uh, well, Sherry Lynn's playing Vela tomorrow night. Uh, the game tonight, Edinburgh North, they're locked into their spot. That game doesn't mean anything. Uh, just Edinburgh North trying to end the season on, you know, the Where home. Where are they playing again? Uh, La Jolla. Okay. It's just, you know, a good little senior day there for Edinburgh North. Homecoming? Um, home, no. I, don't know if, I don't think it's homecoming, Whatever. but just a senior day, last home game, all that stuff. Sherry Lynn's playing at Vela. They should win that game 100 to nothing or 63 to nothing, whatever it's going to be. And they should win their outright district title, perfect season, all that fun stuff. Right. And then the, the last two games, as we mentioned in the, in the uh, previously with the playoff scenarios, the Lars Lincoln, uh, Donna game, and the Economides, and Paul New game. Yeah. I will be in La Jolla, and uh, that'll, be, that'll be the two games to watch. And I'll be uh, watching one game and checking the scores from the other It'll one. It'll be a good story if Economy makes it. Gabe Pena done a really good job. He has. Program around two years. Uh, from 0-10 to making the playoffs, that ain't not bad. That and ain't that, not bad. Or if Tomas Garcia in his first year, if they, if Lars Lincoln is to make it, their first season of Class 5A, their first season. After being pretty bad. Pretty, being, I mean, you cover those teams. They, for the, for they got up to a good start in the program. Yeah. You know, I think, what, two? Three and seven, four and six, and then kind of went down. Yeah, for their first season yeah. in five at ball to to make the playoffs would be something else. Impressive. Now thirty one yeah. five eight. We mentioned this game a little bit. McAllen Row, West Go East, but talk about the contrast in styles. You know, yeah. this is I mean McAllen Row. They throw the ball all over the place. They try to get in thousands of plays in a game. West Go East. They try to grind you down, grind you down. These long drives. They run the ball. They're built on a running game and defense. Yeah. I think that's fun to see teams that are totally different just playing each other. Mm-hmm. You figure that uh, East, with what they've been able to do all this year, they're going to be able to kind of control the tempo of that game and never let Roe get it's into a rhythm. It's going to be a lot of points either way. Probably, yeah, but the thing about Roe is getting into rhythm. Yeah. And if they get into a rhythm, nobody in the Valley is probably going to be able to stop them, but if you can keep the ball out of the offense's hands, that defense yeah. can be uh, can be torched. So. Yeah, but now, uh, of course, Dennis, I think I know what you're going to say for the game to watch uh, in your neck of the woods. Yeah, Mercedes admission tonight, easily the game of the for 32 4 at least. District title on the line, Mission can go also, and I didn't to say this earlier, but Mission can also go for their first uh, undefeated regular season since 1993 when Coy Detmer. I find hard to believe because they've had some good teams since then. Yeah. And their mission too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's everyone. Uh, coach confirmed it, and everyone I've talked to, uh, it's been a while, but they have a chance to go 10-0 and 0, uh, against a strong Mercedes team, so that's a good game. Yeah, and now a uh, couple games to watch in 32-5A, of course, the Hollandus South, Los Fresnos <laughs> Classic. But, uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a good one. <laughs> also, uh, that's going to be a good one. That, that's going to be going district title line, two, two playoff teams, but uh, you got to look at Pace Porter. Uh, I'm, I'm intrigued by this one. We've been talking this one up for a long time. We've got teams that are combined 0 and 18. I think you have some numbers for us. I Brian. do have a, I, oh, I have a, Lord. I have a couple numbers. <laughs> These teams have been outscored by a combined average of 38.3 points per game, and uh, I don't believe, at least since 2004, actually in the Valley, there's been a game between two 0 and 9 teams. Closest we had was in 06. Hannah defeated Porter. Hannah was 0 and 9. Porter was 1 and 8 going in, and that's the closest we've come to what we've got Friday night. Um, I'm very intrigued by this game. I yeah. gotta be honest. I want to. I want to see Pace score a touchdown. I would love to see both teams win. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. And unfortunately, it's the one time. You know, usually that's kind of a cliche. You know, all these teams, everybody. There's no winners. There's no losers. But for Pace and Porter, with two teams that have had nothing go right this season, and two teams put in awful situations by their school district. Hey, Pace's offense has sort of improved. <laughs> 
Incrementally? Incrementally. Yes. For, for two teams put in awful situations by the school board, both teams should be 4A. Pace was decimated by the school board. Porter, is same thing with zoning and all that stuff. Both these teams are in a terrible spot, and the kids are in a terrible spot. To have all whoever lasted this long deserves kudos yeah. the, from from the players and I guess the coaches for, for getting everybody going. How many going. kids do these teams have? Left? I, I don't know, but whoever those kids are for hanging on, because I think I if I was in this situation, I probably would have checked out and quit the team. It made for a really good story two, two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, there's kids, there's yeah. nothing to play for for these yeah. teams. I love to know it's what they're thinking. It's pure pride for them at this point for whatever reason they're hanging on, and they really do deserve it because they've been they've been going in there and getting their and, and getting uh, their heads knocked off. their heads knocked off for for the last ten weeks. So, you know. Hopefully both teams can win. I don't know if that's possible, but both teams do deserve a W at the end of the I season. I want to see Pace score a touchdown. Pace, it would be good. I think that would be a good victory for Pace to get into the end zone. They came close last week against veterans. Apparently they did, yeah. Yeah, and I hope the Bronzeville school board is the people who put them in this situation are sitting there and watching this game and cheering both teams yeah, on. Yeah, I hope so. Now, they, will, De- they will not be. Now, Dennis, you picked. But they should. I believe you picked Pace to win this game. That's right. I mean, I'm last place in the pick them anyway, so I figure why not go out if I can pick Pace. But, um, hey, we still have the playoffs to pick, too. And you've been obsessed with Pace all this yeah, time sure. and you but didn't and you didn't pick them. No, I, I'm a, I'm trying to beat a certain colleague of mine. But Dennis, why did you <laughs> pick? I you know it's just one of those things. The stories you want to root for. It's I mean I'd like to see Pace get a win. Not to say that I wouldn't like to see Porter, but after going through what Pace has gone through this season and the situation they've been put in so quickly after last season, you just want to see something good for those boys and to get in the last game of the season to go off with the win. If you're gonna win would, one. This is the one, right? Exactly, and mm-hmm. it makes for a good story. Mm-hmm. It's one of those stories you root for in high school football and. We just hope to see it happen. Yeah, yep. and I hope that you uh, stuck with us through this podcast. I hope you stick with us next week. People uh, love Pace and Porter. They people do love us. Pace and Porter. This is what they want to hear. I'm Brian. Todd, uh, he's to my left, if you can see this, which you can't. Dennis is to my right. And I will talk to you next week. Hey, Pete. Bye. <laughs>